So part four of the testosterone series, I just want to talk about uh, sleep and recovery um, and how that plays into testosterone. Uh, we all hear the eight hours a night. I don't do that. I got a baby. It doesn't work. This morning, I woke up at three to a crying baby. I didn't even have to do anything. And then I woke up at six. That's not un uninterrupted sleep. You know what I did? 40 ounces of coffee. <laughs> what a morning, right? Um, but when, uh, when we start talking about the hormone side of things, uh, tea specifically, um, like, does eight hours of sleep really matter or is it about the quality of sleep? Um, how does all that play into understanding testosterone? Yeah, I think you've got to do the best that you can with you know, both a mix of quality and quantity. We know that when we have uninterrupted sleep, we can go through the different sleep cycles. So we've got light sleep, REM sleep, and then delta or uh, slow wave sleep. And so the, the struggle is, is that the, the more interrupted this sleep is, we're ending up with less time in either delta sleep or slow wave sleep, um, less time in REM and, and maybe more light sleep. Yeah. And that can be problematic for athletes, but you know, you can increase your total quantity of sleep, try to take a nap, um, you know, as situations permit, try to uh, hack your sleep in certain ways. And, and if people can't necessarily get more sleep, how do we, enhanced quality of sleep. Can we make the room a little cooler? Can we change your nighttime routine where as soon as, like your sleep latency is basically how long does it take you to fall asleep as soon as your yeah. head hits the pillow? I think a lot of people leave a lot on the table in terms of, well, once you're actually in bed, how much, like how much time are you asleep in bed? Yeah. Or we, you know, have, you know, as a culture now, it's like, well, let's watch Netflix before you go to bed. And then you've got like a TV in there, blue light, whatever. Um, so keeping your bedroom as a place where it's like so solely sleep focused and making sure it's an optimal environment for you to actually get deep yeah. sleep and recovery is, is incredibly important. I can't wait to tell you about how bad of a system I had last night. I watched the Aaron Hernandez documentary oh. right before going to sleep. And I laid there for like an hour and a half because my body was just like overly fried on how ridiculous that guy's life is. And then I woke up at three and then I woke up at six. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was like, that was so terrible. Yeah. How am I gonna survive today? This is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all have those days. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sure. sometimes you wake up and it's like, did I send that email or did I do that <laughs> yeah. thing? I mean, I, there's always something that's on your mind. I think making it as habitual and having a routine can be super yes. helpful. So what does that routine look like uh, for many people? Because, I mean, I'd love to say I have one. I actually do the majority of any meditation or breath work while I'm laying in bed because it seems like it's the only 10 to 20 minutes that I 100% own is, is laying in bed. But um, how long do you kind of recommend and what does that system look like? So this is context dependent. Like how strung out are you as a person? Like the higher up you are yeah. at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 p.m., you got to come down eventually, right? So it's like, how do we get you to come down? Um, some people just need, you know, eliminate some blue light, get in a dark space, read yeah. a little bit. Uh, other people have to go as far as like contrast hydrotherapy and or be like a hot shower and a lot of unplug time, you know, and, and moving towards that. You know, some people can fall asleep pretty quickly without, you know, much assistance. And I think that's where, you know, having a coach can be helpful because you can find out individually what's working for you. I've got a guy that sleeps better just when we add more carbs at night. And all we did was pull it from earlier in the day moved yeah. a meal back a little bit. Other people, if you put food close to bed, they sleep terribly because they don't digest it very well. Yeah. So it's paying attention to your individual biofeedback and trying to come up with a structure. Also, you know, be realistic and honest with yourself, like how stressful is my day to day? And like, what do things look like until seven, eight, nine p.m.? Let's say you're yeah. trying to go to bed at 10 or 11, you know, what do things look like before that? Because it's not just the 30 minutes before bed, it's okay, after work, how am I setting myself up yeah. for, you know, having, having that time? Um, the devices, like the Whoop Band, uh, Aura Ring, yes, do you follow? Aura. Oh, that actually it's is an Aura Ring, yeah. look at that. How yep. much do you pay attention to that? So, it depends. If I know that I'm gonna be severely jet lagged or try, I'll actually put it on like airplane mode, so it actually signals it later on, because it's surprisingly accurate. So yeah. when you have shitty feedback, it almost gets in your head, you're like, oh, I can't train hard today because yeah. I, I feel like crap. Um, but it's helpful to monitor your HRV, your readiness score, uh, it does a great job of predicting for me when I'm gonna get sick. So, for example, before Christmas, I actually came down with something and the readiness score and my body temperature and respiration rate started to change. And that's how I knew for me that like, okay, I gotta emphasize recovery, I need to take some time yeah. off in the gym and focus on that and nutrition. 
uh, hydration, things like that. Uh, Whoop, I actually tried Whoop for a little bit. Um, for me, I think as they change, adjust the bracelet and like improve some things, um, I, I certainly liked it. I enjoyed the interface. I think it's good technology if you want to try it. I already had an Aura Ring, so um, I'm not associated with either of these companies. Yeah. But they're both. I mean, they're both good tools. But all it is is a tool. You can sort of gamify the system as much yeah. as you want. But I mean, you're going to know too. Don't be so reliant on technology that you're not paying attention to what's going on inside you as yeah. a person. Like your body basically does its own lab work all the time yeah. and we just don't pay attention we're so numb to what's going on it's like we don't even realize well like i feel like crap today or like i feel like i have really good energy what yeah. did i do yesterday and the day before yeah. that set me up for success today so they're tools i definitely like them i think we're learning more about hrv as the research comes out um, and as we have more like i've got more anecdotal data from working with clients but uh, you know, I think it, it can be a good way to reinforce some good habits and also make you aware of maybe things like that you weren't aware that you were doing. Yeah, I worked with Whoop for all of last year, and I found um, early in wearing it, it was really cool. And then I really liked all the data. And then, um, and this is what I recommended to a lot of people was like find a couple like objective measures. Um, the red, yellow, and green probably isn't like the most objective measure. That's kind of like this we, idea that they've created like the right thing for you. So if you can follow like total time that you're actually asleep or find a deep sleep, like find one or two things that that band is testing. Um, and you can do it with the aura ring too, I'm sure, but find yeah. one or two things that that band is testing that are purely objective measures and just track those. Like the calorie thing, they have no idea how many calories. They were telling me I'm supposed to eat like 4,500 calories a day. Don't do that. Um, but like total time in bed, how long it takes for you to fall asleep. Like find one or two that you can actually um, objectively track and, and stick to those that are important to you. Um, and then leave a lot of the subjective stuff. Just yeah. that be, let that be its thing and um, see how you feel based on those more objective measures. Um, when it comes to actually getting into the gym and training though, and like recovery, we talked in part one about like, um, Ben Pekulski says like, go and do five minutes of like breath work right after, so you can get into that parasympathetic as quick as possible. Um, but strategies to kind of ramp yourself up to an intense training session. Um, and then how do people recover as quickly as possible getting out of that training? You mean besides 40 ounces of coffee? Cause I'm pretty sure that should be probably going to do 20 more as soon as I leave more, here, just to get to excited for night yeah. training session. Today's just a not, not a healthy day. <laughs> not a healthy day. Yeah. I mean, you can ramp yourself up. Like there, there's obviously some really great, you know, both anecdotal and research on caffeine. Yeah. You know, it can, it can definitely enhance your training session. Um, but I think it can also mask your true drive for training and like how you're actually doing. Uh, I tend to focus a little bit more on, on kind of like post-workout and what you're doing as far as, you know, uh, just getting, getting back into a place in that parasympathetic state or, or setting your body up for recovery. Uh, you can use intra-workout nutrition for that. You can use post-workout nutrition. Uh, carbs and just insulin alone will sort of bring down that cortisol level that you're experiencing. As far as pre-workout nutrition, it's having enough nutrients to support recovery without actually making you sleepy. Yeah. And so you can play around with that. Some people do well with a mix of protein and carbs. Some people need kind of straight protein um, or like a mix of that with a little bit of fat and they do okay. I think where people run into issues is like don't have a super fatty meal pre-workout and you're gonna be lethargic and kind yeah. of sluggish as you move through. And then depending on you know, you're, uh, there's even folks who get as far as into like the, your actual neurological type with, with training and how that influ influences your nutrition, the type of work that you're doing. But I think having some like pre-activation work, just dynamic warm up, moving in, you know, have some intra workout nutrition and then have a meal, like don't stress out about it, but like have yeah. a meal sometime after, that's just all gonna help bring you back into a better place for recovery. Yeah. Right on. We go uh, talking about tea in part one. Make sure you get over part two for nutrition, training in part three, recovery in part four. If you need the whole thing, we'll be posting next week the full interview with Sam Miller. Um, get into the description. There's a free men's health guide to testosterone uh, written by Sam. And where can people find you? SamMillerScience.com or the podcast. SamMillerScience.com. What's the name of the podcast? Sam Miller Science. Sam Miller Science. Make sure you check out episode three. Yeah, you're on three. I'm or number four. three. Right, three or four. Three or four. Check it out. We're popular in Slovakia. We're huge in Slovakia. They heard the name Anders. They were like, yeah. that's my people. Yeah. Um, get into the description. Free guide to men's health and testosterone. And we'll see you guys next week.